back to the show. Please welcome Tucker Maxwell to our podcast. Tucker is a top 1% originator nationally. Uh, well, Tucker is with Guild Mortgage, who is a uh, top 1% mortgage originator. And his focus is helping folks um, finance homes in the Pacific Northwest. He's been a, been a senior loan officer at Guild Mortgage for the past six years, and he's got some great insights. So, so welcome back to the show, Tucker. Thank you, Dan. How are you? Uh, I am good. Um, so anything I said in that first segment, did you want to kind of address with regards to interest rates historically, stuff like that? Yeah. So uh, I think it's important to zoom out. You know, when we look at interest rates over the past few months or even the past few years, they look they look terrible. They look like they're high and the sky's falling in. But when you zoom out and like you mentioned, the housing crash in 2008 and further, we're right in line with, you know, historic interest rates on home loans. And so the further you zoom out, the less it bad it looks. Less less catastrophic it looks, right? Correct. Yeah. So let's talk today's topic. We're kind of talking about changes to FHA loans. So what changes are being made? Yep. So FHA announced a, a big change um, that takes effect on March 20th. And what they are doing is they are reducing the mortgage insurance component on FHA loans. And so with, with an FHA loan, these are typically low down payment borrowers. So the, the benefit of an FHA loan is a three and a half percent down payment. And so it carries a mortgage insurance component. And that has been standard across the board on all FHA loans. And they're going to reduce that from 55 basis points to 35 basis points, which is going to save on average nationally FHA borrowers about $800 annually on this mortgage insurance component. Gotcha. So what's the reason behind doing that? Creating the homeownership opportunities. So they're recognizing in all markets, affordability is a question and prices are going up. And so how do we allow underserved would be home buyers the ability to qualify for a home at a higher purchase price? And that's to remove part of the, the payment from mortgage insurance and allow them to move that over to principal and interest. Hey, look, I found the slide with regards to interest rates. So I thought I would kind of bring that in while we're talking about it, but the zooming out, right? Nationwide picture. I mean, nobody wants to remember uh, 82. I was playing with my Atari at the time, so I don't really remember. <laughs> um, but, but I mean, look at that. Look at from 2000 uh, on, right? 2000 on, you're pretty much right here in line with where we sit right now, which I believe was in the mid, mid sixes. Is that right, Tucker? Yep. Mid to high? Okay. Yep. Exactly. Um, okay, so back to your question. Sorry, I just thought that would be a good thing to bring up. And actually, it, since um, since we're talking here, let me see if I can find the new construction one. So, um, uh, 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 uh. Dan, while you're, while you're looking at that, what yeah. has been historically the average appreciation we've seen in that same time span, 82 to today? What's been the average appreciation on home prices? That's a great question. Oh, that's Canada. Sorry. Who cares about Canada? Uh, add the stream. So annual appreciation. So you can see right here across the board, um, you know, 20 to 23 was nine and a half percent. But I believe if you take it across this span, usually I don't see that it shows about four percent is kind of what you can expect annually appreciation. Gotcha. Yeah, the reason I ask is so even at interest rates where they're at, it's still a great, great investment. Yeah. For, for like, I think it's so funny as the conversations that we have about this, uh, so many people get fixated on this, um, on, on these crazy numbers, right? Yeah. These numbers that are just, they're aberration. Like, do we want this or, I mean, because it turns into this, right? right. It turns into this minus 4% if you have an average at four, you know, and this 12.9, that's not, that is not normal. Like it says right down, oh, you can't quite see annual, okay. oh, that goes to this one right here is long-term trend is 4%. Yep. And he, here's an interesting uh, one is, is in this uh, 2003 to 2006, it was uh, above the trend by 21%. Right now, we're only above the trend by 12%. So that's much, obviously it's, it's above the trend, which means that's where we had our correction last year. Um, but it's only 12% above the trend. Got it. 
and then I'm going to find that new construction one because it actually kind of it kind of ticks me off a little bit because there's all this stuff that we talk about. Um, you know, you're talking about unemployment. Oh, Canadian again. Sorry, they we you know Keller Williams is international. You know, uh, new new home starts. There it is. There's our new home starts. 2005, 2006, 1.7, 1 1.4 um, million, and right now we're at a million. And I know that our current growth rate in the United States, you know, all the people coming here from all around the world is is it, it just means we need more homes, you know, 100% need more homes. So right. anyhow, all right, back to your question. Sorry about that. Um, so, okay, so basically, you said that, that this is creating an opportunity where people are saving money on those on the FHA uh, mortgage insurance. And what does that mean? How does that affect future buyers? Yes. Yeah, so really, when, when we qualify a borrower, Dan, we qualify them off of a proposed monthly payment. So that's really what you're qualifying for is based on your income and your debts, we can qualify you up to a certain dollar amount for your monthly payment. And if we can take money out of the mortgage insurance bucket and move it over to principal and interest, that borrower now qualifies at a higher purchase price for the same monthly payment. Wow. Okay. And so when is this going to be happening? March 20th. So FHA has a process where we um, register that loan with HUD, the Housing and Urban Development. So the organization that manages FHA loans and starting on March 20th, is when the, that new mortgage insurance premium will take effect. And so therefore borrowers will qualify for more. Okay, awesome. Uh, so why, why this change? Uh, everything they're talking about, inventory shortages, home prices going up, uh, trying to get uh, first time home buyers to qualify. And so they've, they've recognized that there's an underserved market across the country that they need to help provide incentives and to give them an opportunity to buy and create wealth through home ownership. And so they're probably, that's a piece of it. And they're probably also looking, you know, from an actuarial standpoint, if that's the right word and saying, Hey, maybe the defaults that we expected on these FHA loans are much lower than anticipated because of the appreciation, because people recognize it's a good investment. Maybe we don't need to charge as much for the risk that's present today. Uh, what is the, uh, what is the, um, who, who most, who will this most help, I guess is the best way to put it. Like what price range? I mean, cause I believe uh, FHA home loans go up to a certain amount, right? Yep, exactly. So these aren't going to be your jumbo borrowers. These aren't conventional high balance loans. So these are going to be that, you know, seven to $800,000 purchase price with three and a half percent down. So it's going to be your, your low to middle income folks maybe credit challenge folks that need that do have the income but their credit scores are lower that's really who this is going to serve which are the underserved home buyers in the country yeah i think there and there there's something that we don't often talk about whenever somebody says a seven hundred thousand dollar home uh you know oh my gosh that seems like a lot right yeah. but let's put that in perspective it's three and a half percent down so that's what 20 uh excuse me seven twenty six thousand dollars down on a seven hundred thousand dollar house 24.5. Thank you. 24.5 plus fees. So let's just say, let's say plus fees takes you 28,000, $28,000. And when you put that down, you move into a house that you pay rent on, which, or, you know, you're paying a mortgage on and you're gaining interest at 4% of 700,000, not of 30,000, which is your down payment. I just don't know if people really connect the dots there, right? $30,000, which I'm rounding up. I'm just being, you know, I'm going to round up $30,000, but I'm earning 4%. What's 4% of 700,000? Tell me what that 28. Is. So, so that, <laughs> so where can you put $30,000 down and, and turn that around in one year? Exactly. It, it, right. And that's that's exactly the math that we're doing with people. You know, that's why, you know, if, if there's a hesitation to not buy because you don't have 20 percent down is is the mortgage insurance really a deterrent? If you can get that kind of return, I'm not seeing that on my stock right. portfolio right. or anything else. And so on top of the appreciation, Dan, you also get one percent with the natural amortization of your payment. So for savings through that principal payment plus appreciation, you're getting about a five percent return each year. 
Yeah. And, you know, we can find homes on the east side for $700,000 or below. There are homes like that. You may, it, it's your first home. So you may need to be a little flexible. It may be a town home, it may be a condo, uh, but you're jumping in, you're locking in an interest rate uh, for 30 years. And guess what? When interest rates uh, soften up a little bit, you can call Tucker up and refinance and get and lower your monthly payment again. So, you know, home ownership, we've got lots of things moving around and it's important to, to reach out to a professional in order to get qualified. And that's why we have Tucker on our show. Uh, so Tucker, how can people get a hold of you? Yep, all the major platforms on with the phone number on the screen, uh, but Facebook, LinkedIn, all of those uh, platforms. Tucker Maxwell, I think I'm the only one in lending across the country. Okay, well that brings us to um, our final story of the day. Uh, let's see where it is. Um, I just wanted to announce that uh, Seattle now has uh, um, announced that they are still the saddest large metro area. Now, I don't know about you, Tucker, but I don't feel very sad living here in the Northwest, but it could be, it could be because we're on the east side, right? So if we uh, Google happiest cities in America, I believe we're going to see uh, that, um, let's see, where is it at? Come on. Um, I think we're number two. Let's see. That's 2020 study. That's, that's, Let's see. Okay, I'm, I'm going to lead the witness. Bellevue. Study names Bellevue, one of the happiest places in America. So across the pond, you got Seattle. Everybody's sad in Seattle. I say the pond, and I do mean Lake Washington. But here on the east side, Bellevue's a happy place. So we can help you. Um, if you want to be in sad Seattle, we can help you too. But uh, definitely, we are the east side real estate team. So uh, that concludes our show. We hope you found it informative, useful. You can take some action from it. Reach out to Tucker. We appreciate you all watching. I'm Dan Edwards, Managing Broker of the Eastside Real Estate Team. Have a wonderful week. Mm -hmm.